Hey, what up boys? Sound may be a little bit different today, as I've moved to a new place with a much larger recording space. So let me know if the quality has dropped, and I'll try and adjust for the next video. Anyway, today we're talking about enchanting and the weapon progression in Ashes of Creation. We've got a lot to cover today, so let's begin. What is enchanting, you ask? Well, traditionally, enchanting within an MMO is powering up your weapon or armor with a stat boost or special effect. It usually comes with a variety of options with various particle effects covering the enchanted piece. In Ashes of Creation, there are two types of enchantment available. Vertical enchantments, which are your traditional power boosts, and horizontal enchantments, which are more of a stat rearranger for your weapons. However, let's start with the vertical enchants, as these are the main form of progression and are a lot more interesting. As far as we know, all enchanting happens on crafted weapons. However, it feels like that would limit the value of loot out in the world, so I expect enchanting to extend to all weapons in a later build of the alpha. There's no randomness related to crafting the gear itself, However, when enchanting comes into play, that is where risks start to rear their ugly head. Progressing a piece of gear beyond its higher level in Ashes of Creation is called over-enchanting. This basically means, for the cost of some materials, you have a chance to increase its stats, which is widely used in Lineage 2 and Black Desert Online. They have stated there will be a few levels of safe enchanting, however, beyond that is when the risk begins. In BDO, players use valuable stones to power up weapons and armor. However, instead of being a feature tied to artisan skills, it is instead Black Desert's main progression for gear. As you can see, players accumulate fail stacks, which increase the chance of success. Up until plus 15, failing your enhancement only loses you the stone you used and a small amount of maximum durability on the gear that you were upgrading. However, when we get to the pre, duo, tree, tet, and pen levels, which are basically just plus 16 to plus 20, when a duo fails, it downgrades to the previous level, forcing you to upgrade again to duo. As you can imagine, getting all the way up to pen is a money and patience sink, as you can see in the pen prices on the marketplace. And it's probably the primary factor as to why BDO isn't more popular today, despite its wide variety of content and high quality combat and life skills. In Ashes, as over enchanting fails, your items will also lose durability on them and cost materials and currency to repair. However, it also states that there's a chance your item will be destroyed completely which will massively increase the value of items with high over-enchanting levels on them, as reflected in the prices of BDO's accessory items, which are also destroyed upon failure. This progression system works. However, as players have shown, having complete progression tied to this kind of system is widely disliked. As a side note before we move on, Within an economic node, players will be able to set up player stalls where they can sell their enchanting services to other players, meaning that you don't have to be an enchanter yourself to progress your gear. As to perform some of these higher level over enchants, you will probably need to be proficient in the scribing artisan skill. Let's move on to the horizontal enchanting system now. They describe horizontal enchanting to be a form of stat rearrangement on your gear allowing you to sacrifice some physical damage on your sword and change it to fire damage for increased effectiveness against foes weak to fire. This sounds a lot like the reforging system we saw in World of Warcraft's Mist of Pandaria, where for a small price, you were able to sacrifice some of one secondary stat to gain an equal amount in another stat of your choice. This wasn't increasing the gear's power in any way, just rearranging the stats to suit your build. Another horizontal path we can explore is the way an enchanted item can look, adding particle effects for some sweet cosmetic satisfaction. Nice. With enchanting covered, let's move on to the second type of weapon progression we'll be seeing in Ashes of Creation. Weapon Progression Paths. Steven states in the May 2018 livestream 
that weapons may come with a progression path of their own, a talent tree of sorts, that allow all weapons to be utilised some way by all the classes. Not just tying daggers to rogues or staffs to wizards, any class can in some way benefit from the progression path of a certain type of weapon. This is similar to how weapons work in Elder Scrolls Online, however to a much lesser extent than what Intrepid are wanting I expect. As you can see all weapons provide you with active abilities that you can place upon your bar, however they also offer some passive abilities that once mastered you're able to use any time provided you have enough skill points. Uh, anyway that's pretty much all I got for you today. There was a whole segment on the wiki about enhancement stones but it was so all over the place that I didn't really want to get into it in this video. We'll wait for a later date and see if we can get some more information on it when the alpha one hits us. The next videos will be going over the classes so look forward to that and hopefully you're playing one of the four classes that have been shown to us. Thanks again for watching the video, I appreciate all the regular commenters and the guys who commented on the last video. You guys are the best, and I really appreciate your continued support. I'm going to make it a thing as to mention your name at the end of every video from now on. Because without you guys, this channel wouldn't exist. See ya!